In order to provide terabytes of easily accessible storage and alleviate data capacity strains, QNAP's TR Series external devices provide direct attached storage available to PCs, Macs, and QNAP NAS. In this tutorial, we'll be going over how to configure RAID settings on QNAP's TR Series external storage devices and how to use the QNAP external RAID manager designed for the TR Series to configure and manage your expansion unit for optimal use as direct attached attached storage on your Mac or PC. You can choose your RAID with the Hardware RAID controller and set the TR Series device to Hardware RAID, or you can choose to set the controller to Software RAID to manage your storage device using the RAID Manager. But the primary reason one would choose to use Software RAID would be to use the TR Series device as an expansion unit for NAS, because the Software RAID configuration allows you to use the TR Series device as a storage pool. Let's look at Hardware RAID first. To use the Hardware RAID controller, simply set the three switches to the appropriate configuration for the RAID of your choosing, and then hold the set button for three seconds. You should hear a beep when you've held the button long enough. Keep in mind that when you set the RAID, any previously stored data on the drives will be lost. Once the RAID is set, you can connect it to your computer. Once the computer recognizes the attached storage, it may say something like the disk isn't readable by the computer and give you an option to initialize it, or you may not see the external device recognized at all. This could be because the file system for the storage still hasn't been set. So now you will use the disk management software on your computer, which would be disk utility on Mac OS or disk management on Windows or disks on Linux Ubuntu. In Max Disk Utility, click the disk and select Erase to format the drive. Keep in mind that if you were to reformat a disk in this way that already has data stored on it, that data would be erased. When you do this, you'll select the file system that you would like to use. I'm going with EXFAT because it is compatible with both Windows and Mac, enabling me to go between working on a Mac workstation and Windows workstation. And it supports larger file sizes than the older FAT format. However, APFS can provide better performance and more security features on a Mac. macOS Extended, also known as HFS Plus, was the previous default file system for Macs before APFS and is also an option. The reason that you might choose macOS Extended is that it is compatible with older Mac operating systems, which may not be compatible with APFS. APFS was deployed on Mac operating systems, starting with the macOS Sierra 10.12.4. So Macs running an OS before that won't support APFS. I'm going to name the storage space QNAP College, and I'll just leave the scheme as the more commonly used GUID partition map. The storage device is now ready to be used as external storage. If using Windows, you can start by searching for disk management and selecting create and format hard disk partitions. This will open disk management. A window will pop up asking you to initialize the disk, to do this, select your partition style and then click OK. GPT is the newer partition style and will probably be the best option in most cases. As you can see, our storage is still unallocated though. So right click the disk and select New Simple Volume. This will open the volume wizard. Click Next, select the capacity of the volume. I'm just going to use all of the disk space for this volume. Now you can assign a drive letter or drive path to the partition for easier access to it. I'm just going to assign a drive letter. Here we will choose the file system. You can select between NTFS and EXFAT. NTFS is the default file system for Windows and supports large file sizes similar to EXFAT, but supports some advanced security features and generally better performance than EXFAT. But while NTFS formatted drives can be read by Macs, they cannot be written to by Macs. You can also choose the allocation unit size here, which will determine the size of the blocks of data that the file system uses to store data on the volume. 
Choosing a larger allocation size will result in fewer blocks necessary to store a file, but may cause files to occupy more storage space. Smaller allocations means the data of a file will be spread across more blocks of data. I'll just go with the default setting. And here you can also label the volume and there's an option to enable file and folder compression. Enabling compression results in less storage space being taken by files, but can also make it slower to access or modify files. Make your selections and click next. Now on the final page of the wizard, you'll see a summary of the selections that you have chosen. If everything is to your liking, click finish. The TR series DAS will now be formatted and ready for use on Windows. Now let's look at setting up software RAID to configure and manage the disks from the computer. Like the other hardware RAID options, you'll use the RAID switch to set the RAID. Next, you'll need to navigate in your browser to the URL qnap en us utilities essentials to download the QNAP external RAID manager software. When you open QNAP External RAID Manager, you'll see a picture of your unit with clickable drive bays, which provide information on disk status, disk type, model number, capacity, the RAID group it belongs to, and smart information, which includes things like temperature, speed, and many other statistics being monitored by the External RAID Manager. On top of the RAID Manager window, you'll also see three tabs labeled RAID Configuration, disk information, and firmware information. RAID configuration is where you will initialize the RAID. Disk information gives you basic disk specifications and status, and firmware information is where you search for firmware updates for the expansion unit. To configure the RAID group for your expansion enclosure, click the Add Group button. Now select your preferred RAID type, Select the disks you'll be using to build the RAID and choose the resync priority to indicate your preferred balance between RAID rebuild performance and general performance of the TR series expansion. Service first prioritizes storage speed over RAID rebuild speed. Resync first prioritizes the RAID rebuild speed over the storage speed and the default is a balance of the two. Keep in mind that once your RAID is built, you won't be able to change any of these settings without re-initialization. Once you've made your selections, click Create. You'll get a warning informing you that all data on the selected disks will be wiped from the drives. When you're ready to initiate and assuming you've backed up all of your data, click Yes to continue. Now you've created your RAID group, but the storage still has yet to be formatted with a file system, so a window will pop up prompting you to format the RAID group. I'm on a Mac, so I'll do this with the native Mac utility application, Disk Utility. I'm going to name the storage space QNAP College. I'm going to format the RAID group for APFS for performance, and I'll just leave the scheme as the more commonly used GUID partition map. The storage device is now ready to be used as external storage. Now let's try using the TR series external storage device as QNAP expansion storage. We'll start by connecting the DAS set in software RAID mode to our QNAP NAS. When you log into the NAS OS, you will likely see a prompt to configure the storage. We will configure the storage in the Storage and Snapshots app. Click Create and select New Storage Pool from the drop-down menu. You will then go through our Storage Pool Creation Wizard to create a storage pool. After creating the storage pool, you'll be prompted to create a new volume, which is necessary to create shared folders and store files. For a more detailed overview of storage pool and volume creation, you can reference QNP 104, Understanding Storage Management in QTS. If you want to safely detach the TR series after it has been configured as expansion storage, like for instance, if you were physically moving the NAS and expansion and it needed to turn off and unplug everything to move it, you can go to external storage devices and select external storage management and then safely detach the storage. 
If you want to use the TR series device as external storage on QNAP, you would use the hardware RAID to set your preferred RAID configuration and then plug it into the USB port of the NAS. To configure the external storage, open storage and snapshots. You may see a window regarding the attached storage with an option to either configure external storage or configure additional NAS storage like we just did. But keep in mind that if you select NAS storage, you will then be asked to set the RAID switch to software RAID. Since we're configuring external storage, click on the external storage tab. Here, you can see your device along with any partitions. To format, click the partition and then go to Actions and select Format from the drop-down menu. You'll choose between six file systems. EXT4 is QNAP's QTS OS native file system and is also the native file system for Linux Ubuntu. It offers solid performance and reliability and can be a feasible option for those only using the external storage for QNAP and or Linux Ubuntu. But if you also plan on using it with Windows or Mac, you're better off choosing another file system with proper compatibility. EXT3 is a previous iteration of the EXT file system and only makes sense for better compatibility with older Linux-based systems, but EXT4 has been around for quite some time now, so EXT3 will not be necessary in most cases. FAT32 is not recommended as it's an older version of the FAT file system, and it has a file limit of 4 gigabytes. As we went over earlier, NTFS is a good option for Windows users with solid performance and reliability, but lacks full compatibility with Macs. HFS Plus, as mentioned earlier, is the Mac default file system prior to APFS and can be considered if you want to use the external storage with Mac and QNAP. As discussed before, EXFAT is the best option for cross-platform compatibility and is compatible with Mac, Windows, and QNAP NAS. QNAP used to require an additional charge to offset the charge of the EXFAT driver, but has been free since QTS 5.0.1 or QTS Hero 5.0. You can also name the external storage in this window, and there's an option to encrypt the storage so that the data cannot be seen without the correct encryption key or password. Make your selections and click Format. Once formatted, you can now transfer data between the TR Series external storage and the NAS. The TR Series external storage devices are a great way to alleviate storage capacity constraints on your personal workstations. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos to better utilize your QNAP NAS.